So, Paul asked me out again, and the next day I couldn't remember whether he'd asked me out for Friday or Saturday. So, I just called him back and I said, hey, Paul, I can't remember. He said he couldn't remember either. So, we're going out Friday and Saturday. Uh-huh. Isn't that funny? Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I thought it was kind of cute. Well, so do I. It's just that this is the way I display mirth when I'm miserable. What's the matter? Nothing, really. I'm just out of a job, that's all. Oh, Rhoda, no. What... Hi. Oh, hiya, Lou. Good, you're back from lunch. Uh, listen, will you get that stuff on the postal reform ready? I want to go over it with you. Well, uh, Mr. Grant, I'm not really back from lunch. I still have three minutes. Mary, you're an executive. You don't have to punch a clock around here. You can come back early. Well, uh, for today, uh, could I just come back on time? Okay, but you better not be late. <laughs> Rhoda, how did it happen? Oh, listen, we can talk about this later. I don't want to get you in trouble. You still have a job, even if I don't. Hey, you weren't fired, were you? Fired? Who got fired? <laughs> oh. Come on, Mary, who was it? Who got fired? Uh, nobody, Ted. Really, nobody. It was you, wasn't it? I wasn't fired. I quit. What do you do? Well, I was a window dresser. So did you happen to watch my show last night? Sympathetic, isn't he? The reason I mentioned it is because I did a special report on the unemployment crisis. Mm -hmm. It's at an all-time high this year, you know. Yeah, thanks. I heard. Or is it low? <laughs> Hi, Ted. A uh, Heimer. Anyway, I had to stay last night. Good. Now that I have you all together, could I get you all to move apart? Mary, you're late. All over the world. Yes, sir. Uh, Mary, please, uh, just get back to work. Now, I'm, I'm going to be fine. All right, but I'll see you as soon as I get home tonight, okay? Sure. And look, don't worry about me, kid. I've always wanted a free afternoon. Now I've got one. What are you, you going to do? Well, I don't know. It's uh, 1 o'clock. I think I'll take a little walk. Get my mind off not having a job. Good. Maybe do some window shopping. No, wrong. Yeah. <laughs> I guess I'll just take a bus home and worry. a very nice little cook, Mary. Thank you, Phyllis. It's a new recipe. Well, anytime you want to progress to gourmet things, I have some uh, <laughs> lovely recipes. Anyone can do them. Even me? Oh, sure. Even my little best made the most delicious beef stroganoff the other day. Which isn't easy on a toy stove. <laughs> He's having dinner with a bunch of executives from the Chapman Chocolate Company. They want him to accept an advisory position. Why would a chocolate company hire a dermatologist? <laughs> Never mind. I just figured so, it out. So, anyway, <laughs> I thought I would stay home and see how you swingin' singles fill your hours. Oh, Phyllis, we do the same thing you do. We usually sit around and wonder what it would be like to have a happy marriage. <laughs> would you? Coffee? Oh, yes, I would. Mary, I'll help you with the dishes, kid. After Phyllis leaves. Oh. Oh, to be able to express your hostility so openly, Rhoda. I admire you for that. Really, I do. Well, Phil, it's just that today at the office, Rhoda and I got into a kind of a personal discussion, and we couldn't finish it because there were all these people standing around. Butting in. <laughs> oh. Well, that's all right. I realize you two have so much more in common. You're both being husbandless and all. <laughs> you know, I liked it better when we were swinging singles. You know, Rhoda, dear, when Bess has been hurt by some of her little friends, I always tell her it's natural when there are three in a relationship that one gets left out. <laughs> all right, then, stay. So just start the story where you left off. Uh. I'll pick up on it. So, how did it happen? How did what happen? You'll pick up on it. Well, you know, I've been unhappy there for a long time. Where? At her job, at Bloomfield's. You've been fired. It so happens I quit. And what are you smiling? No, oh, just trying to cheer you up. <laughs> so why were you fired? Phyllis. So why did you quit? Well, 
They've always been so chintzy, Mia. I mean, I've never had enough time or materials to do my windows right. It's always make do. Remember that trouble I had last spring? Oh, yeah, I do. Something about the Easter display and you wanted to buy a big bunny rabbit or something? Yeah, mm -hmm. and they told me to use the kangaroo. <laughs> the kangaroo? Yeah, it was left over from a display saluting Australia. Oh. What their thinking was, are you ready for this one, folks? What's the difference? They both hop. <laughs> Mary, I'm a creative person. I cannot do corny, old-fashioned windows with flowered swings and fake birds and daisies from ribbons. Oh, I love those! Anyway, two other girls in the department got bonuses on their checks this week. And you didn't. And I didn't. <laughs> So? So, I went into Werber, and I said, look, Mr. Werber, if I were a sensitive type person, I'd think you were trying to tell me something. And what did he say? He congratulated me on my sensitivity. <laughs> so what could I do? I quit. Hey, listen, you won't find any trouble at all getting a new job. You're too good at what you do to be out of work for long. Yeah, thanks, Mia. I had a similar experience. <laughs> Years and years ago, right after college. Well, actually, it wasn't years ago. <laughs> She's got an anecdote for every occasion. I made up my mind that I was going to find a really special job. And I pounded the pavements. And finally, I came up with something that paid $24,000 a year. What? Lars. <laughs> <laughs> Too bad you couldn't get it in cash. Hi. Hi. Hey, I hope you don't mind. My television was acting funny and it finally died. Uh, I can't afford to get it fixed now. So I just came down here and was watching some daytime programs. Daytime? It's 7.30. Really? I was wondering what Walter Cronkite was doing on a soap opera. <laughs> you know, Mayor, it's fantastic how quickly you catch up on these soap operas. Okay. Last time I saw Dawn of Day was when I had the flu five years ago. Today I turned it on, she's still having that baby. <laughs> so, uh, how'd the job hunting go? You know, today, Ruth Elizabeth, she meets this guy named Guy, who they tell her is a fiance. She has amnesia, you know. No, I didn't remember that. Neither does she. <laughs> so, uh, did you look for a job? Sort of. Yeah. You know, you start out watching these shows for laughs, and then you find yourself getting really hooked. And the game shows. But, uh, you didn't have any interviews or anything, huh? Who had time? I cleaned the apartment, washed my hair, did some laundry, and the day was shot. Well, you ought to get out and look, though, don't you think? I mean, if only for the fresh air. Well, I did get out today. I signed up for unemployment. Oh, you? Yeah. Hey, I thought you couldn't collect unemployment if you quit. I thought you had to be fired or something. Oh, well, uh, Werber claims he fired me. Oh. Well, what difference does it make? At least you get the money, right? All right. $57 a week. It's not exactly diamonds and mink time, but it helps. Oh, good, Rhoda, you're here. I was a little worried. I knocked on your door, but there was no answer. But I didn't smell gas, so... <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for keeping a nose on me, Phyllis. Isn't she a wonder? The way she keeps her sense of humor at a time like this. <laughs> it's not such a terrible time. You're right, Rhoda. I went through this morning's paper and I circled in red the jobs that I think you might have a chance of getting. Thank you very much, Phyllis. Well, you're very welcome, Rhoda. So what's new with you, Mary? <laughs> oh, dear. not much. Oh, key punch operator. Key punch operator. Not only don't I know how to be one, I don't even know what one is. It's funny, you always see ads for them, though, don't you? There must be a shortage of them or something. You should look into it. I mean, at least it would give you a skill. Girls earn up to two fifty a week, no experience ness. Wow. Call Mr. Edwin Eddie Clark, Elton Hotel, Suite 202, day or night, or send full figure snap. Oh, Phyllis. <laughs> what? Well, it never hurts to explore all the possibilities. Thanks, Phyllis, but I'm not ready to explore those possibilities yet. All right, then. How would you like to be a commercial artist? 
Well, yeah. Where, where was that? I I've always wanted to be a commercial artist. Then draw this girl. <laughs> Phyllis, the time has not yet arrived when I get my jobs off matchbooks. Have it your way. But it has been well over a week. Oh, boy, that Phyllis. She really picks a person up. Hey, I know what. Let's change our clothes and go out to dinner and a movie, huh? Okay, but I can't afford to do both those things. I gotta really watch expenses, Mia. Well, okay. Well, which one can you afford? I can change my clothes. <laughs> for Ted? A list of job openings. Ted checks that listing every day to see if his job is available. If it isn't, he knows he's still working. He's like that guy that checks the obituaries every morning to see if he's still alive. I like to keep abreast of things at the station, that's all. Switchboard operator, sales secretary, associate art director. Anchor man. No. <laughs> Say, Mary, did Rhoda get a job yet? No, she's still looking. Oh, well, what about that art department job? What art department job? The one that Ted just mentioned. General art background. She's had that. Some set design. Oh, she's a window decorator. That's close. Uh, lettering experience. She can fake that. Hey, Mary, it would be fun with you two working in the same place. Oh, ah. Uh, I don't, I don't think Rhoda would be interested in this. You know, I, fr first of all, she would hate being cooped up in those little cubby holes they have down in the art department. Uh, well, I admit, it's not the wide open spaces of a department store window. <laughs> and she, she letters terribly, very poor. Uh, she, she printed a note to the milkman last week. He left her one egg and a dozen quarts of buttermilk. <laughs> no, she, uh, she wouldn't be uh, right for this. Okay, I'm just trying to help. Uh, well, thank you, but... Uh, She's got a bunch of interviews today. She'll undoubtedly come up with something. Coming by here for lunch at 12, and I'll bet you she's got something by then. Hiya, Rhoda. Hi, Murray. Oh, is it 12 already? No. Mm -hmm. It's only 11.15. Have you finished your interviews? Mm. The first two were filled before I got there. Well, what about the third? I can't operate a key punch. <laughs> well, listen, kid, you had a rough morning, but... Uh, You'll find something by this afternoon. Listen, I'll see if I can hurry up and finish and we'll have an early lunch, okay? No, well, that's okay. I can wait down in the drugstore, read a few greeting cards. Oh, uh, no, no, no. S sit down and uh, just relax. I'll, I'll only be a minute. Oh, <sighs> uh, well, no, see, the, the idea is to read it. <laughs> Can I get you a cup of coffee? No. No, thanks. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll just be a second. Hmm. Maybe some water, huh? <laughs> ah, jobs. There's that word again. Switchboard operator. Sales secretary. Associate art director. Ah, uh, that's filled. Huh? Uh, th that's al already been filled. That one. I, I don't even know what that's doing up on the board anymore. <laughs> that's, uh, I'll uh, go see uh, if uh, Mr. Grant could, will let me go to an early lunch. Then. Oh, no, man, don't do that for me. Oh, yeah. oh let her. Come here. Um... Mr. Grant, I was supposed to go t to an early lunch with Rhoda, uh, but she's here now, and... You'd like to make it a late breakfast instead, huh? Yeah. Uh, see, she's kind of depressed because she hasn't found a job yet, and, uh, well, anyway, I thought I would uh, work late tonight if it's okay if I go now, okay? Barry, you know what? You're a fine human being. Boy. I bet you Murray doesn't think so. He's probably sitting out there right now thinking that I'm... Boy, and I don't blame him. Look what I did. Oh. <laughs> You've crumpled up his piece of paper. This is 
the job list off the bulletin board. Rhoda asked me about that job, and I said it was filled, and it isn't, and I don't even know why I did it. Isn't that the, the rottenest thing you ever heard of? <clears throat> okay. <laughs> Let me take this from the top. Your best friend, who's very depressed because she's out of work, is qualified for a job which you knew about. You, a fine human being. <laughs> and not only didn't you tell her about the job, but you lied and said it was filled. Is that close? Yeah, th that's close. <laughs> well, why are you smiling at me? Because you've just reaffirmed my faith in human nature. You, you mean that, w that what I just did wasn't rotten? Oh, no, no, that was rotten, all right. <laughs> it's just nice to know that everyone's rotten. <laughs> Up to now, I thought you were one of the few holdouts. is that uh, it wasn't really a very good job. I mean, um, you know, the pay is very low, and uh, there's not really any chance for advancement at all, and it really, it just it looked to be uh, boring. Mm. Uh, did you think of all that before you lied and said it was Phil? No. Yeah. Then you're still rotten. <laughs> Wait a minute, I think this is yours. <laughs> Here, and enjoy your meal. Hi, I'm Rayette. I'm sorry I kept you waiting. Oh, it's all right. I'll have a uh, steak sandwich medium yes. and coffee, please. Sand, medium, coffee. And I'll have uh, a small green salad. Small green salad. Does that come with crackers? Yeah. <laughs> That's all. That's all? Hey, we have a great soup today. Vegetable, homemade. Yeah, their soup is homemade. It's very good. Have soup. Yeah, it's very good. All right, girls. Soup. Okay. Uh, instead of the salad. Instead of the salad. Did sandwich. that also come with crackers? Yeah. Uh, Miss, wait just yeah. a minute. That's not a lunch. Rhoda, have the steak. Uh, Miss, she'll have the steak sandwich. Okay, two steak sands and soup. No, Mary. Miss, no, wait, wait, please. <laughs> yes. I will have the soup. Uh, and a salad, okay? Is that enough? But Rhoda, it's my treat. Why should it be your treat? I'm the one that invited myself to lunch. Well, it, it's not a lunch, it's brunch. It's a steak sandwich, soup, and salad. And crackers. Right. <laughs> Why should you pay, no matter what it is? Because I want to. And because I lied when I said it was filled. What? Rhoda, I don't know why I did it, I guess. Maybe I thought I would have to be responsible for you, or that you know, maybe it wouldn't be good for our friendship to be working that closely together all the time. You know, we'd get on each other's nerves, maybe, but... Anyway, I'm sorry I did it, and it's yours if you still want it. What's mine if I still want it? <laughs> the job! What job? This job. Gee, I... I find this really hard to believe. I know, I know. You actually think I'd want this crummy job? <laughs> the pay stinks. The job looks like a complete bore. And I probably have to work in one of those little cells, right? Well, huh? yeah. <laughs> Mary, <laughs> come on. I mean, how could you? I didn't. I, I told Murray just this morning that you wouldn't be interested in this job. Mm -hmm. You really expect me to swallow that? No, well, you I thought did. I would grab at this Rhoda, job. No. I... Why do you think I crumpled it up like that? Hey, I'm really sorry. Gee, kid, you really feel bad, don't you? Yeah, I do. Mm, well, let me cheer you up then. Hey, Rayette, bring me a steak stand. <laughs> <laughs> and you'll shape her up. The next thing you know, we'll find her on a park bench somewhere. She's probably just tired. Tired? From what? The only place she's gone in the last three weeks is here. 
that's not true. She's gone to unemployment. You know where that money comes from, don't you? Yes, from the employer. That money comes from us, the taxpayers. From you and me and Lars and Bess. Bess? Would you tell me how a 12-year-old pays taxes? Every time she buys a little toy. Oh, Phyllis. <laughs> anyway, Rhoda says that things are slow right now. Yes, mostly her pulse. <laughs> Mary. You're not doing her any favors, encouraging her in this life of sloth. Oh, come on, Phyllis. She's not slothy. Mary, as her friends, we owe it to her to straighten her out. We have to force her to take a good, hard look at herself. We have to shake her up. We have to slap some sense into her. Rhoda! <laughs> Rhoda! Rhoda! <laughs> What time is it? It is 7.30. Oh. oh, is my hair on fire? Oh, no, it's still there. Another few minutes, it would have gone up. Rhoda, the time has come for you to hear something that must be said. Mary. Oh. <laughs> what is it, Mayor? Uh, uh, well, Rhoda, uh, as a, as a friend, it's, uh, about you're not looking for work. Uh, not, not looking, you know, but uh, not looking hard enough, you mean. Right. Hmm? Well, I guess so. I, if I were out of work, Rhoda, I'd, I'd really, I'd sure be out there looking for a job. I mean, I would, I'd probably be a nervous wreck by now. And I, I, as a friend... You'd like me to be a nervous wreck, too. Uh, Mary, uh, let me handle this. Uh, Rhoda, dear, it seems to me you're uh, enjoying this. Oh, Phyllis, she is not enjoying it. Yes, Mary, I am. Aha. Uh -huh. You are enjoying being out of work? No, I'm enjoying watching the two of you stumbling over each other. Aha. Uh -huh. Because today I found a job. What? <laughs> yes. Well, why didn't you say something, for heaven's sake? Where? At Hempel's, in charge of the window dressing department. The whole department? Yeah. Fantastic! <laughs> the department is only one other girl, but the manager wants far out windows, and he says I can experiment all I want. Oh, Rhoda, I am so happy for you. I know you are, kid. Well, I hope it works out for you. <laughs> if it doesn't, what's the worst that can happen? They'll fire me like they did at Bloomfield's. Aha! Uh -huh. Oh, Phyllis. This is a big night for you, isn't it? Two ahas. <laughs> but you were fired. Yes, Phyllis, yes, I were fired. But now I are hired. <laughs> and I'm making more money than Mary. I'm sorry, I meant to get her with that one. <laughs> no, listen, it's okay. I'm still happy for you. <laughs> How much more? <laughs> okay. <Yeah. laughs> Hey, Nan, have you had dinner yet? No. Then let's go out and celebrate. Great idea. Yeah. And the one who's making more treats, right? <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> good morning. Good morning, Mary. Say, Mary, here's a good job. I'm associate producer for the Chef Leroy Show. Hey, they pay you associate producers pretty well. Let me see that. That's more money than I make. Excuse me. It's already filled. It is not, Lou, and you know it. Mr. Grant, that wasn't a very nice thing to do. I know, but I've always been rotten. 